there, and welcome back to another exciting edition of Culture Kids Storytime. Today's story is really about helping you understand your role and your ancestors' role in America as we know it today. This story really explores all of the facets or things that have happened throughout history that a lot of times our contributions as Black people have been overlooked. This story is called Heart and Soul, The Story of America and African Americans by Kadir Nelson. I absolutely love this story. It gives you a great overview of what really happened from the Black perspective. It helps you understand your role in history and how even though a lot of times we are written out of the narrative, we were absolutely instrumental in America becoming what it is today. So I hope you enjoy this story, Heart and Soul, keeping in mind that this is a pretty big story. So there's no way that we'll be able to read all of it this week. But I hope that you'll join me again for the next installment as we go through this entire book and really help you to understand who you are from the Black perspective. Let's check it out. Chapter one, the Declaration of Independence. Liberty, when it begins to take root, is a plant of rapid growth, George Washington. You ever visit the Capitol in Washington, D.C.? It's a beautiful white building made of sandstone and it is a big iron dome that rises over the city like a full moon. It was built by slaves and freemen to be a symbol of liberty. Americans had won from England in the American Revolution. Inside the rotunda, there are large painting and sculptures of famous Americans, big old statues of Abraham Lincoln and George Washington. The paintings tell the story of how America came to be. Strange though, not one black face. In all of those pretty pictures, there's plenty of white folks and a few Indians here and there, but none of us. It's as if we never existed stricken from the record, like Moses from the walls of Egypt. Of course, those fancy paintings ain't telling the whole story. Black folks have been here at least as long as Europeans. By the early 1600s, English, Spanish, Portuguese, Dutch, and French settlers had made their way to America and established colonies all along the East, Co East Coast. The colonies were a means for European countries to expand their empires and were also a new source of wealth. Each colony produced crops and mined for riches that were sent back to Europe. Africans had come to America as laborers with the Spanish in Florida in 1565 and about 60 years later with the English in Virginia to do the work of building the colonies and producing what was sent back to Europe. The labor of these Africans helped to create the foundation of America in its early days. So you see, we deserve to be in those pictures just as much as Europeans and Indians. And if you really want to know the truth, honey, we are much of the reason they would later have a chance to fight for their liberty in the first place. By the mid 1700s, the English colonists had been in America for a few generations. They had gained control of most of the settled land along the Eastern seaboard, set up local governments and made the colonies quite profitable by the way of slave produced crops. Having been in America for so long, many of the colonists had come to think of themselves as American rather than British and had grown good and tired of living under the thumb of a faraway king. The colonists felt it was time they had to have a say about how they run their own local governments. They began to talk on the streets over dinner tables and in taverns about the king's unfair taxes, about his nosy soldiers everywhere, and about splitting from England. They talked about not wanting to be slaves to the king. Slaves? Child, what in the world could they ever know about that? The king had taxed the colonists for everything from paint to glass and paper. He even taxed their tea. People in the colonies had finally had enough. To show the king what they thought of his taxes, they snuck out to his boats and dumped all of his tea into the harbor. 
It wasn't long before the king sent more troops over here to try to put those folks in the colonies back in their place. But it only made relations worse, and the colonists more determined than ever to split with England. In two years, there was blood on the streets of Boston. And in one more, Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence to cut ties from England. The American Revolution had begun. There were slaves who fought in that war, but unfortunately, many of them chose the wrong side. By the time of the Revolutionary War, there were more than 450,000 black folks, both slave and free in the colonies. The British had promised freedom to any slave who fought for them, and honey, that was a powerful thing to tell a slave. So thousands of them joined the British. General George Washington, who was in charge of the American troops, didn't allow black folks in his army. He and the Congress didn't think it was a good idea to put guns in the hands of folks who might, well, use them against their former masters or other white folks. But Washington changed his mind after he had lost so many of his soldiers to fighting in the pox. Only then were free black folks and some of the slaves allowed to join his army. General Washington was quickly rewarded by all the black men who signed up to help him gain the upper hand. After eight years of war, America won its freedom from England and its citizens were able to manage their own affairs and control their property without having to pay the crown for the privilege. Oh, did I mention that their property included us? Both the slaves and free black folks who fought in this war for freedom hoped that the government might free all the slaves in the colonies if they fought for them. But the government only freed the people who fought in the army and slaves who lived in New England states like Massachusetts that chose to abolish slavery after the war. Just about everybody else was out of luck, especially many of the slaves who fought for the British. Some left with the British or fled to Canada, but most went right back into slavery. A few years later, America wrote her founding papers, the Constitution. George Washington was made the very first president and a new country was born. It should have been a proud moment for everybody. But honey, we didn't have much reason to celebrate. Through the fruits of our labor and our volunteer soldiers, we helped America free from England. And yet we were stuck in a country that kept most of us as slaves. So in this first chapter, we learn that the war was happening and this country was being formed. There are multiple sides and lots of things happening in the background. But the key thing to think and keep in mind here is that African people and African American people were on the front lines fighting this war. Yet when you hear this story told, you never hear about the contributions of black people to the American story. And I think it's very important for you to understand that all through life and liberty, the pursuit of happiness, black folks have always been there, but we're not always getting the credit that we deserve. So I hope you tune in next time to hear the second chapter of this book, Heart and Soul. Take care, guys.